Did I tell you the story? Uh, when I was like maybe in middle school, I you know we would go to the mall a lot, like me and my friends and stuff like okay. that, like every kid did that was a millennial, I guess, in middle school. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went into you know a variety of stores, including this music store that you know sold CDs or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I remember I was like looking at a CD, and my friends just sporadically ran out. So I decided, to, oh, they're going somewhere. I got to go with them. So I ran out, and I heard a big blaring sound, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like. Somebody just stole something. And I looked down and I'm holding that CD I was holding. And I was like, oh, God. And so I realized that I accidentally didn't put that CD back. So I stole the CD. So I immediately realized what happened. And the woman who was probably 20 or maybe younger, Mm -hmm. but I was like 12. So whatever. So she walked out. Could have been 40. Maybe. Who knows? My perception at that age was (laughs) very skewed. It's way off. Yeah, totally. Uh, So she came out and grabbed the CD for me. And I didn't know what to say. I was just like, ah. So then... From like literally years after that, yeah. I had this like tick that anytime I left a store, I had to shake my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so like it scarred me that much that like I was so paranoid that I was accidentally stealing something wow. that I had to like shake my hands. And just to make sure. Just to make sure. And it took me like a DMT trip to like get that tick <laughs> to go away. The fact that little Wayne could spend 10 years in prison due to gun charges. Okay. Dude, what would you even do? In prison? It, it, no. <laughs> I can think of a few things. I've spent some time alone, my friend. And in the company of other men, anyways. <laughs> Against my own will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it depends. You might you might just have to force yourself to like it. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe they just haven't forced themselves to like it. Who, what are we talking about? <laughs> I think we just... We're talking about prison. I feel like... Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, yeah, I mean, well, I think we're all prisoners in our own minds, Different discussion, but <laughs> I do feel like anytime I talk to... Well, here's the thing. My dad always had this saying. Yeah. He always says, you'll never meet a more religious person than an inmate, right. <laughs> which is funny because it's true. Because when you're in those situations, you either develop this like external sort of existential crisis thing where it's like, oh, if any if any force out in the universe helps me, I'll, I'll be in debt to them forever or whatever. And then they right. get out of prison on parole and they're like, I'm a man of Jesus now or yeah. whatever. So it's like I get like... You know, when you're in that kind of situation, things change. And mm-hmm. I get that you like look for different ways of, you know, dealing surviving. with it. Yeah, surviving and dealing yeah. with your situation. Because to be honest with you, from the outside, it looks horrifying. Like, yeah. I mean, we, I mean, there's nothing but prison jokes about, you know, rape nothing or but. abuse. You know, got to beat the biggest guy up or whatever, or you'll get shanked or whatever right. it is. Or you'll have to join an Aryan Union, which <laughs> is not desirable. I mean, you know, typically. Well, I mean, would you rather join, uh, what are the other gangs? I would assume. What's the black gang called? I mean, I think that's what they're called. <laughs> Either join the Aryan gang or the black gang. But the Latinos. I mean, I assume. There's a gang, though. There right? is the a gang. Aryan, I, the Aryan race. Right? The Aryan well, Brotherhood. The Aryan whatever. Brotherhood. Yeah, that's right. what it is. To be honest with you, that's the only one I always look at just because that's the one I feel like would scope me out. And I'd be like, nah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think like everybody else would be like, don't even worry about it. You don't even need to know her name. Right. <laughs> don't, even, don't even worry, Cholo. <laughs> That, not you don't even worry about it. Just stay yeah. on that side of the yard. We're good. Yeah, it'd be tough, man. You get you. You're facing ten years in prison, though. Yeah, but that's ten years in prison. Nobody spends ten years in prisons. It's like nobody spends like you know the full amount on you know on whatever like on a Black Friday sale. Like there's always like more discounts <laughs> down the line. Right. Like you're gonna get some type of you know deal or something. I mean, I mean, if you're little Wayne, dude, you have money for lawyers and you can get. Yeah parole deals you can get you know sentence reductions you can get stuff like that and you know i feel like if you (laughs) i feel like if you don't have money i feel like (laughs) that sentence probably will be the sentence right there's a there's a saying that somebody told me that spoke pretty loudly to me actually there was a i forgot where it came from but they said if the if the punishment is a fine the crime only applies to the poor because if to make pay, pay. yeah, because if you could pay your way out of it, then the then the you know the punishment is nothing. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want at that point because you yeah. can just pay your way out. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. So I guess like Little Wayne facing ten years in prison, it's like well, yeah, whatever. Right. He'll get out of he'll get some out of it, fine. Most and of I mean it. people in prison know who Little Wayne is. Nobody's right. gonna stab Little yeah. Wayne. It's yeah. Little Wayne. You, yeah, but you what... can't cut his music catalog off here. He, t- he had a slump for a while. You yeah. gotta like <laughs> wait for him to get good stuff yeah. back. You know. Anyways. So when, when the COVID uh, vaccine becomes mandatory, is that the first or second question on a date? Um, you know what I mean? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. I think like, 
I think that would probably be brought up before you even go out. Really? Yeah, because I feel like... At Especially one, out here. Well, yeah, and I think if you show up with a mask on, I think it's pretty clear that you didn't take it. But if <laughs> right. you did take... Or you yeah, could just be balls you, to the yeah, wall. Yeah. Why would you even wear the mask if you didn't take it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you show up without a mask on, they could be like, oh, he took the vaccine. I mean, it could get to the point where, like, if you see, like, a little mutation growing off the side, you're like, <laughs> she's good to ah, go. Ah, she's good to go, right <laughs> on. Herps? Ah, no, that's not herps. That's the vaccine. I draw the line at herps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the line. But no, I mean, I don't. It's interesting because they say they're going to have like a card now that you're going to have to carry. Right? Yeah, yeah. But it's a card. You can forge that shit. Right. And just spread whatever you want. Spread it, baby. <laughs> What's funny about it is like, like to me, it's insane that like people are afraid of like people who are like intending to super spread. Like, right? Who the f- like, who? What psychopath is like? Who wants to about, get COVID? Who wants? Yeah, exactly. Who and wants to go get cough and spread on it? random people? That's what I'm saying. Like, what's so funny about it? Other is, Other than like, a homeless person in Santa Monica. Oh no! Well, they were well, they were spreading some stuff before COVID. And right. Let me tell you, I caught a few things. <laughs> Not fun. We 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 still talk sometimes, but anyways. Yeah. Uh, but no, there's uh there's just like this sort of consensus that like people who are. Like there's like a group of people that just want to spread it, and it's like I don't think anybody wants to spread this shit. I think they they just want to. Just... Who wants to spread anything other than HIV and happiness? <laughs> Isn't that HIV? I guess so. <laughs> I'm definitely happy. Did I ever tell you the story how I OD'd on <laughs> cornmeal? <laughs> <laughs> ah! And this no, is no, but I gotta hear it. This is a 100 percent true story. 100. percent Well, it. <laughs> I got to say, dude, I've been told I've lived a very crazy, weird life, and a lot of people don't believe half the shit I say, but I'm, I promise you, I'm not dude, that... Dude, I believe 100%. Okay, well, I'm just telling you, I'm not you're that... Like, I'm, not that I'm not that creative, so okay. if it helps. So, you know in Mexican food restaurants, like specifically like restaurant restaurants, like sit-down restaurants, they give you like that little scoop of like cornmeal. It's kind of like that, like... It's sort of like a... I don't know, like a... Sort of like cornbread, but it's like more like mushy, kind of like a... Not really. Okay, well... In most Mexican food restaurants, like uh, El Torito is a place that has it because okay. this was what reminded me of the story. Is, uh, so they give you this little scoop of cornmeal and essentially it's just like, you know, kind of like a, like a less, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a crumbly, more moist cornbread sort of. Got it. But there's, it's literally corn. Like yeah. it's corn and that's it. So this would be funny if you knew what this was because they only give you a small dollop Right. They only give you like a little bit for like a garnish, but it's yeah. so good. Tastes great. Tastes kind of like cornbread, but sweeter. It's really good. So when I was a kid, I was like maybe 11, maybe 12. I was at a restaurant and I was like, why have I never ordered more of this? So I right. asked for a bowl of it. And the waiter was like, I don't remember what happened and you'll realize why. But he kind of, I think, warned me against that. And I was like, no, no, no. I'll just take more. Like, can I get more of that? And I'll pay for it. And he was like. All right. So he brought me a like... 11-year-old. Yeah. I'm, I'm de- I can work this off. Don't worry about it. I got a regimen. So he brought me like basically like one of those little like clay guacamole bowls. He brought me a right. whole thing of cornmeal and I ate the whole thing because it was delicious. And like maybe that night I felt like real intense stomach pains. Mm. Like I was just like, like felt like a stabbing pain. I was just like, oh. And the next day I couldn't go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, mm. like if you eat too much cheese, you know what I'm talking about? Couldn't go to the bathroom and I was like, oh, oh, like something's wrong. And my mom was like concerned. She was like, well, should we go to the doctor? And I was like, yeah. Went to the doctor and the doctor was like, you got a blockage. <laughs> wow. Fucking cornmeal. It blocked, it bricked my stomach. Your bowels. Dude, were it bricked it up. completely. Wow. So I they took me to the hospital and I had to get my stomach pumped <laughs> from cornmeal. cornmeal. Yeah. Wow, dude. It's a real story. So how much, how, give me a, show me how big it was. It, again, don't remember too well, but maybe it was like that much. It was that much cornmeal. For an 11 year old? For an 11 year old dude. Well, here's the thing. If it was like ice cream or like something else, it's like a normal amount for most. But like yeah. this cornmeal is like the dankest food. Like it's so dense. Really? Yeah, I like gotta they, eat that. It's, I mean, it's I mean, delicious. I don't think but I've ever had be, that. Be, be, be warned. Don't eat too much of it or else you'll be in the hospital. We'll see. <laughs> Going for the record. Yeah. Yeah. So. Give me two bowls. And yeah, exactly. Too, yeah, dude, please don't. As a friend, I'm yeah, telling you now. Never do that. Good. Thank you. So I can go home, not worry about you. Good. I like uh, that. But I will say though, um, up until that day, I didn't think food could hurt me. And boy, <laughs> was I wrong. Yeah. So did you know if Finding Nemo was actually accurate to like, fish? Well, yeah, to, yeah, to the clownfish, that if the mother died, the father would just change its sex to female and bang the son? Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm not making this up. So I'm just saying, if they have to do a live action movie, I have the plot. <laughs> <laughs> or at least something for a sequel, right? I'm just saying, dude. It just take him, It took him two movies to change. Just telling you, man. Wow. Is we that what to, happens? We have to take a realistic approach. Yeah. Wow. So I'm just saying, what's weird about it is... That's what that's, Disney should do. That's literally what happened in my last relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest with you, I felt kind of like a clownfish. <laughs> <laughs> the sun? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, There's still a worn out for my... <laughs> I was like, look, I can't explain biology here, okay? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Wiping the makeup off, off my face. <laughs> are you a clown? Are you a woman? What, what's going Either on? Either way, I smell like fish. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's also, like, I'm talking to guys and I'm talking about guys, but I feel like with women, it's maybe a little bit worse, like, with putting on weight and stuff like that. I feel like it's just because yeah. of the, the body type or whatever it is. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a difference between the genders. Nowadays, I would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's different. Hormones play a factor. Totally. Age. So is... I should st- so I should stop taking estrogen is what you're saying? <laughs> it might help. I thought you told me to take estrogen. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Thanks for you that just, Christmas present. Never, you just never talk to me anymore. <laughs> How do you like that chicory? I forgot the name of it. I was so going to call it the dandelion coffee. <laughs> So this chicory. Is fr- chicory root coffee. No caffeine. Again, completely pointless. I don't know why I'm still <laughs> drinking it. I feel like it's funny because... You do I, feel a little sophisticated drinking it, though. I feel more sophisticated, that's for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, that's kind of a fainting quality of these days. <laughs> I feel like I could feel sophisticated like one hour and the next hour I'm just like, oh, I'm just a piece of shit still. <laughs> I'll, give you a, I'll give you a question. Okay. So living out here in Los Angeles... Yeah. Most of the time, you're surrounded by dietary trends, right? Yeah, all the time. Because we see nothing but new things that happen with like the world of nutrition and the trends of, of what's going on like, and with newbies health food. And newbies who don't health. have any. Yeah. <laughs> and also the people who are semi-holistic and think that certain things they eat are going to cure diseases of theirs or prevent things of theirs. Right. Like, what is your take on this sort of sweeping... Uh, health consciousness that's gotten to the point where we don't even I don't even know where it is anymore like I hear right. dude what's I hear what's the new thing, trend yeah and what's the new trend because like this chicory coffee I'll be honest with you never heard of it until you introduced it to me 10 minutes ago so I don't know what the benefits of it are right. I assume you're very healthy so I assume if I'm drinking it I'm going to be healthy not knowing if I'm allergic to something right or if it's going to be completely throwing something off on mine but I trust you so, <laughs> you know, I trust that you have my better interests. So I guess yeah. like my thing is, is like, are you, are you like not ironically going with some of this stuff? Do you kind of look into this or do oh, you kind of think it's, it's all, Yeah. It's a, 90% of like the health world is ridiculous. Okay. I mean, it yeah. really is. I mean, when it comes to like trendy dietary thingies or whatever, like, um, like, you know, I, it, people, people like to identify in things. And especially when it comes to like their temple, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh god. So we're we're going there now. Okay, well, cool. yeah. I mean that because that's how it. Like you meet people and they and they tell you you're they're a vegan and then you say you're not. There's an automatic moral judgment on yeah. their on their end. Yeah. And like when when your dietary restrictions like you know make you think that way, you might have a problem. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, dude, people have done that for forever. Like, Jews had dietary restrictions in the Bible. Like, yeah, well, for a long ass time, and they still do. Catholics, Christians, too, I guess, yeah. Yeah, well. Certain times, Lent. Lent would be the only thing, but you're just giving up. And also not eating meat on Friday or whatever. But right, yeah, but it's like, eh. That's not as, like. Dramatic as, Dramatic yeah. as, like, kosher. Kosher is totally different, You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like. I don't know. It's like it's weird to to meet a Jew who's a vegan. You know, that's yeah, I guess that's so, yeah. kind of it's like what? So you're basically not eating anything. Is right. What you're saying, yeah. <laughs> Just cookies? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Just okay. cookies. Okay. All right. No, it, it, it's silly, but but people like to jump on the new thing because they think new is like better. Yeah. Totally. And it's not. Yeah. It's like it's like you see a lot of people doing like crazy ass workouts online, mm-hmm. like on Instagram, like just doing a bunch of movements in a circuit and you're like well what are those movements good for well i don't know they're new 
<laughs> they look good when he does it. I think that's a lot of motivation for health and fitness nowadays is Instagram. I feel like oh, social it, media yeah. is like the motivator for most people oh, on this oh, stuff. Oh, it really is. Because, I mean, you're constantly... Who who are the uh, the biggest people on, you know, Instagram? Models. People with... Yeah. People Models, with fitness good-looking people. bodies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... Oh, dude, all the time. <sighs> and then they always have that stupid, like, oh, just got done eating pizza, wink. It's like, no, you fucking didn't. Right. It's yeah, like, yeah. no, you didn't. Like, you can't or, give me Or this. you did in your awesome test. <laughs> You're on a lot of tests and some gear, man. So like, but that's the shitty thing is like, that's what I'm saying. Like 90% of the health and fitness industry is bullshit because like you have these guys that are on test or some type of anabolic and, and they look lying. great. Yeah, they're lying to you And what they don't doing, say yeah. anything. And yeah. they're like, yeah, dude, I just do these circuit workouts all the time. And this is how I look. So yeah, totally. you're the one with the problem. You should work out harder. And it's like, like, that's ah. too much test of how aggressive they're sounding right now. Right. <laughs> God damn, maybe some roids in there too. But like that's uh, the easiest thing because that's that's what Arnold Schwarzenegger did. That's what all the goats of bodybuilding have always done. Yeah, you just lift, you know, five days a week, and you eat a lot of food, and and don't forget to buy my protein. Yeah, well, that's what's funny about it's it. Like, is that like that protein is not going to do shit for you. I mean, I think that's like the funniest thing about the world of like real fitness like that, like where you're actually trying to like reshape your entire body and stuff yeah. and get like you know super low body fat percentage and stuff like mm-hmm. that is like. I think it's kind of like well documented now, but it is so hard to get that kind of body without help. Like it yeah. is so hard, like um, nearly impossible actually, unless you have like the, a lot if you're born of, genetically to yeah. have that kind of body type. A lot of dedication to that, and and genetics play a huge factor. Huge, yeah, huge, huge, huge. Oh my goodness, but yeah, I mean, I I grew up with guys who worked out less than me, ate shittier than me, but looked better aesthetically, like you yeah, know, bigger totally. muscles, less body fat percentage. And what? I'm like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I just, I just bench, man. Yeah, that's fucking I'm like, oh, horseshit. That's genetics. But it's genetics, and genetics. it's also horseshit. Fuck you, <laughs> whoever created us. Fuck you. Uh, give me this shit. Come on. I have to work so hard. I'm sore. Yeah, and when they say like, oh, I just uh, gained weight. I didn't change anything. Dude, I had a buddy in high school, Jacob Saint Laurent. That's All right, a very wow. That is a very interesting name for this story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I feel like it, he's a it, fucking it, like clothing brand. <laughs> right. Exactly. And he was on the wrestling team with me, and we we made him come out for the wrestling team, uh, my senior year, and uh, we uh, he'd never wrestled before, and then one and he was he he wasn't on the starting lineup, and then one time, he had to wrestle like he I think he won his position, it was like the first time. Now I'm I'm not saying it's the he only wrestled one time, but he it was like the first time he had to cut weight to make mm. you know to make weight. And uh, he came in after practice. He was like two pounds over. And we're like, okay, go home and don't eat anything. And you'll be fine in the morning. You'll, you'll float two, three pounds. Right. At least. Right. Probably, probably four. Because uh, he had the weight to lose. And, if, I mean, if you've never checked yourself, like if you don't, if you don't uh, eat anything, like you weigh yourself at like 7 p.m., don't eat, don't drink Go to sleep, wake up next morning. You might be three pounds lighter. Oh, I know it happens. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. So he comes back the next day, and he's five pounds over. <laughs> Jesus. And we're like, "You idiot!" Sounds like he was wrestling with what? his cravings. <laughs> what did you eat? And he goes, "I didn't eat nothing, man." This is the most southern Saint Lawrence. You know, you, that's you, Louisiana you, southern. That's you, like you think that's that Bayou southern. Yeah, right you, there. you yeah. think that he would keep the Saint Laurent. You had you to, know? dude. You have to. But it just it lost, got lost along the way. It's Saint Laurent, right? Jesus. He's like, I didn't eat nothing, man. And we're like, dude, you ate something. You can't just gain weight by not eating anything. There's and no he's way. Like, he's like, well, I didn't, I didn't. And th- and then he goes, he goes, all right, well, <laughs> I had a little bowl of oatmeal. And I'm like, they don't make bowls this small, you idiot. I had a thimble of oatmeal. And he's like, well, maybe it's, <laughs> it's a little bigger. And I'm like, ah, oh. no, no, it was soup. That's what it said. He said, I had a little bowl of soup. Oh, I said, God. well, then you ate something. That is something, yeah. And he's like, but it wasn't solid. And I'm like, but it weighs something. Yeah. That's that's what we're talking about. Something that something weighs. Something that has weight that you put in your body. You can't yeah. put it into your body. And he was like, oh. Well, you, he's clearly lying, by the way. Like, nobody I eats, drank like, two Gatorades tiny... as well, like right after we left last night. And I'm like, God, oh, dude. So... So yeah, I feel like a lot of people are like that. I didn't I didn't change anything. 
Well, last night we watched an alien documentary. Oh, God, yeah. Encounters okay. of the Fifth Kind. I love it. So this is a newer type of alien documentary. This guy, uh, Stephen Kreeft? Stephen something. Anyways, uh, his whole thing is ESP is a thing. You mean like the ESP is the signal that you could talk yeah. to aliens or other? Right. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so he has a bunch of people who uh, he gets together in deserts or mountaintops. They meditate together. They signal these aliens to, to appear. And then they have footage of these ships appearing. Let me ask you. Go, go ahead, dude. Is the footage in the documentary? Yeah. Is it believable? <laughs> it is. Really? Yeah, you know yeah. how easy it is to use After Effects nowadays. <laughs> but, yeah. It's either that or After Effects. I'm just saying. Like, I mean, I I am not... No, I'm not I, a doubter. I do think there's something. But how do you believe it? That's the thing. Like, How do I believe what, it? Just what, the, what, what, the with, sheer... But with CGI. Likeliness. Like what you're saying. Well, I'm not saying this guy's right. I'm not... No, I'm saying any type of footage now. Any oh, type of footage could be... Could be... He, uh, I actually... Personally, I think it was a lot easier to doctor stuff... 20 years ago than it was now because here's the thing like nowadays we have 4k resolution on phones and on anything yeah. and everything is sharp as hell everything and you have to have an extremely talented composite artist or vfx artist to be able to really give like an accurate doctored footage you oh, know okay. treatment like hmm. it's really hard to do it perfectly because i see seams all the time even in marvel movies i'll see seams like it's not like if you go into something wanting to be, you know, thrilled and escape or whatever, you yeah. can you, you can ignore a lot. Yeah. Like you'll ignore that seam right there. Right. Because I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. But that's my point. Like I don't want to see it so I don't see it. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like if you were going into this documentary like, oh, I'm going to watch some alien footage right. and see the proof, then you're going to really believe it. That's oh, what, of course. That's what it is. And I mean, that's why they're fun. But I do have to bring it up because nowadays it's really hard to fake it. Really hard. So it's hard to fake it now. Way harder. You should watch it, man. All right. <laughs> Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Encounters of the Fifth Kind. So it's fine. It's the it's, second one this this week. So us. I guess my question is is um how into like alien conspiracy, ghost conspiracy, whatever like otherworldly things are you? Are you like really into it? I'm not that into it, but I'm I'm pretty open to it now with all the stuff that's coming out. So you're open to it like you are Yeah. You you ready to be swayed into believing? It's not I don't think it's a believing thing. It's just like if there's like facts if there's footage then that's what it is and that's that's okay i think a lot of people don't want to believe it yeah and it's true because that's i mean here's the thing like and science, believe like it's like look well, dude, what's if you got the, footage of a of a ufo the tricky th yeah but the tricky and thing a navy is, pilot talking about it you know yeah but navy pilots i mean come on, it's like football players like they get hit in the head a lot bro <laughs> like i don't know what to believe so here's my question do you know do you know what the actual uh, mission statement of science is like the general purpose of science. You know what it is? No. What does George Soros say? It's to disprove. To disprove. Yeah. It's not to prove. It's to disprove. Because the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that science isn't out to prove something. It's to disprove something. That's what science research does. Science disprove research. Disprove aliens. Yeah. Because the thing is, is it's like you know we're not scientists don't thing. do research to prove something. They do it to disprove. Like it's what the, was it? The FBI said that yes, that was a UFO. When the footage came out, they released the footage. Really? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You don't well, know this? Dude, they yeah, released okay. that, that triangular uh, spacecraft. Oh, hell yeah. That the I, Navy I saw that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the Navy pilot was on Rogan's show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. About, yeah, yeah. So, like, the government is finally Can I be honest with saying you also? that these things are actual, tr actually true. Can I be really honest, yeah, though? Yeah. What, what are we doing here? I don't want to lie to you. So, I am very astonished Yeah. that... Trump didn't blurt out something about aliens right. during his time in office. Because I swear to God, that the first thing I thought when he got into office is, well, if there's aliens, he's going to be like, I saw some aliens. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I thought he was going to be like, definitely holding aliens back there. Like, literally, I thought it was going to be the first thing he did was just like, definitely have some aliens. We're going to figure it out here. We're going to figure out how to, how to contain I these guys. I was thinking he was going to do it uh, if he didn't win. Like, Oh, you thought that was going to be his final? Yeah. Like, 
Like, by the well, way, hey, those by aliens, the way, later, these, just like throws these the... These MFers won't tell you? Throws the I help, will. Throws Good the, luck. Throws the White House key. <laughs> yeah. Go get it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking. Um, that would have been the best if he did that, but... But they not. don't... But from, like, I watched this other documentary. I forgot what it was called. Oh, The Phenomenon. And Joe Rogan just had the, the director and one of the scientists on, on his show, and they were talking about it. And uh, apparently the, the, the president doesn't get information on this stuff. Because they're, you know, they're in and out. Four years, maybe eight years. The UFO information is... It's so classified that even the president doesn't get informed? Because yeah. they are... Oh. Yeah, apparently so. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, why would you tell the president if he doesn't really need to know? If there's not that much of a threat going on. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, still, I cool. still hope I still hope that we have some type of like crisis that... It's like, okay, guys, look, uh, we weren't going to cue you in, but there's definitely aliens, and we all need to arm ourselves. <laughs> right. I want yeah. that to happen I'd be so down badly. for the fight. Dude, it would be great. Starship Troopers is still one of the greatest movies. You know? I've always wanted a galactic battle. <laughs> I've always wanted to be in the middle of it. That's why I'm not leaving you L.A. Want, you just want to... <laughs> I'm not leaving L.A. This is where it's going to happen. You think so? Why not Something, move to New Mexico? Either, either North Korea is going to blow this place up, or... I be, feel like I feel like we're cannon fodder. I think they're going to attack the East Coast... Because of just all the, hey, come get us here. Yeah, the New Yorkers. <laughs> yeah, this fucking loudmouth ass New Yorkers. You know, what was that movie with um, with uh, Aaron Eckhart? It was oh, an alien movie yeah, in LA. Yeah, what was that? You're right. Uh, that was a really good one. Oh, dude, what was that? That made me want to fight aliens. Even though I think, I feel like aliens are less aggressive than our movies present them to be a hundred percent dude yeah. it's like indigenous people no, i'm kidding <laughs> no it's like i just i feel like alien <laughs> life form in whatever it is well here's the thing i think there's a couple of things that we have to consider number one is what we perceive as human beings is limited to what our brains can produce and see i of think course. like there's only so much we could see which is another thing that a lot of people have tied to ghost and spirits and stuff mm -hmm. like that how we only see so much how we can't perceive a ghost so you know what i mean we can't perceive the quote-unquote spirit world which is what i think like so many different cultures have talked about forever but i think like aliens it's like we could just be getting this wrong maybe it's not even a form, life form maybe it's an amoeba maybe it's a thing you know what i mean so they maybe were it's not even about, eyes and they were saying they were or whatever. interdimensional travelers i believe it I believe there's... De well, I mean, dude, it's like, you know, I can't really talk about my job, but like, I can tell you that I've seen the edges of space and it's definitely very vast and it's very much like there's something out there. Right. Yeah, of course. Something. No, I, I, I like those two, uh, those two documentaries because the... I don't know if I told you about the new documentary, The Phenomenon. They were talking about uh, this case where these kids, they were like t 10 years old in South Africa and they were on the playground and then they all witnessed this spacecraft and this alien come out of it and then they came back to the school and they told all the parents and the teachers wow and then they they've got video footage of the kids at that age talking about it wow and then they okay. all drew a picture of the same thing that's scary and now they've got they interviewed them again for the documentary now they're in their late 30s maybe early 40s this is like early 90s this is a great plot by the way right if we haven't <laughs> talked about that being a plot for a movie that is a phenomenal plot and they haven't changed their uh their story at all and they drew, they redrew what they saw and it all it's matches like up the story of uh, it kind of right it's like the story of it, how they're yeah. like older now now they have to like reconvene with what the fuck they saw when they're younger exactly crazy yeah but they're not changing their story that's interesting yeah very right but i mean did they i mean did anything happen from that besides Nothing. media coverage did they just see something and they're like all right they saw something and they and it was so interesting to hear these kids talk because these, these kids, when they were younger, the footage of them speaking to the interviewer or whatever, they sounded so intelligent. Like me at 10, I'm like, uh, uh, can I go play? <laughs> like, so basically you were an alien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but these kids were like so intelligent. And they were like, yeah, we just need Where'd to you say they're from? South protect Africa? our planet. South Africa, yeah. I mean, let's be honest here. South Africans are smart. <laughs> they're really smart I people. I think so. Very smart. And this actually, is the first time I realized it. Well, what's funny about it is like what I realized, this is kind of a side note, but what I realized after traveling uh, as much as I did in the last like five years that, you know, we're pretty stupid. <laughs> like right. other countries are very smart and their kids are very well educated. 
Yeah, Kids are very are. much more aware of like yeah, what's going on around them. It's terrible. Amazing. <laughs> but uh, oh, so I was going to ask prison. you. Though. I've been in prison for a while. <laughs> I learned a years whole lot. Prison, yeah, I learned what gang not to yeah, get. Yeah, thirteen years. Woo. Ten years with Lil Wayne. That's nothing. Nothing, dude. dude Absolutely nothing. It's easy. But you know, it's funny as that I, would um, be what kindergarten, kindergarten to, to junior ninth year? grade. Oh yeah. yeah, no, yeah, you're. Oh no, it's more than that. Because twelve grades, right? So yeah. thirteen years is kindergarten to senior year, basically. So you got kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, all the way up to 12. Right, but it would be ninth grade. Kindergarten, first. Wait, you said 13 years, right? Yeah, but I'm saying 10. Oh, it for 10 years, like yeah. From ninth, kindergarten yes, to ninth, to ninth grade. grade. I yeah. could do that again. Yeah, easily. easily. I mean, the older I get, the, the older I get. When I got out, I would be super depressed. Oh, hell yeah. And also tatted up. <laughs> yeah. Super buff. Now, you were going to tell me about the man who spoke to aliens. Okay, so yeah, bringing up to that point. So there... <laughs> There's this documentary that I worked on at my studio that never got released, to my knowledge. At least it got released like locally in Santa Barbara. But uh, when we talked about aliens, it just immediately brought that memory up because yeah. there's this do- there's this documentary that uh, we worked on. We didn't do the production of it; we just did the post. Main reason why is because it basically was one guy running around with a little camcorder and his neighbor, <laughs> and his neighbor uh was this crazy dude like seemingly crazy guy like he was like middle-aged he was kind of chubby and um he always apparently he had the gift to talk to aliens and he knew aliens personally he always saw them he saw when they were coming back and so his neighbor uh was like well shit i'm gonna follow you with a video camera then right because it's like that's a pretty big statement there so the funniest part about this doc was how insane it was because it didn't nothing really like happen happened it's just this guy was insane like he was so outlandish with his personality and he was so urgent with everything and any time he sensed somebody coming to visit him he would like bang on the guy's door he's like jeff 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 it's happening it's happening get your camera get your camera it's happening and so you know it, it's a lot of like night footage of him running around in like his like pajamas like out into like a random field in santa barbara like see that light up there that's him he's coming back that's him anyways so, so the funniest part about this is i realized how genius this doc was and why i'm so bummed it didn't come out because as the doc continued I kept thinking, oh, it's like an alien doc. They're going to see some alien stuff. But it turned out that the doc was actually about how this guy was like, had some psychological problems. Right. And he thought he was talking to aliens. So, so it turned into this like, wow, what happened to this guy? Right. You know, kind of thing. But what the grizzly man should have been about. 100%. But here's the funniest, relating to grizzly man, here's the funniest (laughs) part. We're just going to film this guy for a while. Yeah, dude. The funniest (laughs) part about this doc, without a doubt, was. This this opening scene where he's in this field and he's yelling up. He's like, there he is. There he is. He's coming back down, guys. He, I knew, he said, I knew he'd be back because every time he comes, I shit my pants. <laughs> That's a good sign. And it literally, That's a good just, sign. as soon as that happened, dude, I was in tears laughing because I was like, anytime this guy shits his pants, his alien comes. <laughs> I was like, what? This is insane. And he wanted to come back? I couldn't believe that was like, I mean, but what a genius like way of doing some cognitive dissonance on the fact that you can't control your fucking bowels. Right. <laughs> like, oh, I shit my pants. Oh, don't worry, ma'am. There's a it's correlation. because there's an alien on its way down here. <laughs> I've done these things yeah, yeah, for I'll, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I know. I, I'll leave the Denny's, okay? Yeah. Yep. They're coming. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I don't know. It's just that anytime I think of alien docs, that's tainted me because I always love that movie now. Like okay. that's the doc that I want to see. Anytime right, we so talk that's... about aliens, I'm like, you should watch that doc if I ever get my hands on it. Okay. I'll watch that one. And the guy was super nice. What's funny about it is, is it was just like one guy and then that guy who shit his pants a lot. And uh, like we would, we did the film and then like that alien guy would text us and be like, Hey, 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 I thought of a, I thought of a thing you can change in the edit or whatever. And then like after it was done, he was like, Hey, thanks so much guys. We love it. And we're like, you kind of realize that this is not really in your favor, dude. Like, this is not a movie that paints you in a very good light. This is a very much like, watch this crazy guy shit his pants. 